Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, I welcome you to the lecture number 30 of the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, so, today we will talk about lecture number 3 of the module 10 and overall it is lecture number 30. So, today is the, uh, uh, so today we will talk about the last happiness activity that is uh, cultivating happiness with flow. So, uh, let me uh, before we start today's uh, lecture, uh, let me briefly give you a recap of the last lecture. Uh, so, in the last lecture, in lecture number 29, we talked about uh, uh, enhancing happiness or well being with psychological strengths. So, we had two lectures on psychological strengths. Uh, in lecture 1, uh, in the first lecture, we talked about uh, VIA classification of psychological strength uh, proposed by you know Peterson and Seligman where we talked specifically about character strengths, uh, strengths which are desirable and with certain moral desirability. And in the last lecture, we talked about uh, un, uh, we try to understand strength from the perspective of Gallup strength finder, uh, where two uh, researchers from the Gallup's organization, you know, found 34 uh, psychological strengths, uh, which are relevant in the context of workplace. So, Clifton and Anderson, two researchers from the Gallup's organization, they uh, aimed at understanding what makes uh, people excel in their field or people with high achievement, uh, what are the important you know, strength that they have. So, with the aim of this particular uh, uh, objective, you know, they interviewed many top achievers and uh, they came to a list of psychological strength that are relevant in the context of workplace. Uh, so, they said you know uh, basis of strength uh, in this particular approach, they said the basis of strength is talent. Uh, so, talents are like raw capabilities that we all have inside us and when these talents or raw capabilities are polished or kind of refined with knowledge and skill, they become our strengths. So, that is the idea of strength that they have used in this context. And they said developing strength from their talent is very important and it has a lot of benefits such as you know, it increases your achievement in life, it gives you a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction, it increases the quality of your life and it increases your confidence and optimism in your life. Uh, the Gallup study uh, when they basically did study on top achievers. So, some of the main findings they found is that you know top achievers they recognize their talents and you know refine those talents into their strengths and then they apply their greatest talents uh, in uh, roles and the tasks that they do uh, which best suit those talents and strengths. So, they apply their talents and find tasks and roles that you know best suit which are best suitable for their talents and also they always uh, you know invent newer ways uh, novel ways of applying their strengths and talents. So, these are some of the main findings they uh, summarize from their study. So, from that study they uh, found about 34 uh, strengths uh, strengths and talents and all these uh, 34 strengths and talents uh, they categorize them under four headings. Uh, they are strength associated with execution or executing or implementation of a, of a solution, uh, strength related to influencing people, strength related to relationship building and strengths related to strategic thinking. Uh, 
so overall uh, they had 34 uh, strengths and in the end we also discussed you know various uh, strategies or uh, various ideas by which we can you know, you know develop strength within us so we have discussed all these things in the last lecture uh, today we'll talk about uh, the concept of flow the concept of flow is also an uh, interesting concept in the field of psychology uh, and particularly in the field of positive psychology you know uh, that has a very strong connection with the well-being and happiness and performance so we'll talk about concept of flow uh, we'll talk about conditions characteristics and consequences of flow uh, we'll talk about interventions to foster flow and at the end we'll talk about uh, dangers of flow so let's see uh, what are these concepts So, before we uh, talk about the meaning of law, now I will ask you one few questions from that you can understand uh, some of the uh, main ideas of this concept. Uh, have you ever experienced moments in your life when you are so involved and engrossed in what you are doing? So, have you experienced some moments in your life where you know and you are basically involved in a task where rest of the world seems to have disappeared so you are so involved and focused in that task that rest of the world seems to have vanished your mind wasn't wandering your mind was completely focused on that task and it was not going here and there you are totally focused and concentrated on that activity to such an extent that you are not even aware of yourself you are not even aware, aware of your own self consciousness so you are so involved in the task itself time seems to uh, disappear or time seems to run faster only when you came out of the experience did you realize how much time had actually passed so if if you uh, uh, if you have experienced uh, this some of this um, this important characteristics experientially while involved in a task you might have experienced what is called as flow experience so these are characteristics of flow experience so if you have experienced i am sure all of you have might might have experienced you know at least few moments in your life in certain occasions where these characteristics were present so that means you are in the state of flow at that time So let me give you some of the background of uh, the flow research. Flow state was first actually discovered by a psychologist uh, whose name is very difficult to pronounce. It is pronounced somewhat like you know Mihai Chiksen Mihai. He uh, popularized this concept through one of his best seller book uh, which is titled as Flow the Psychology of Optimal Experience. So Chiksen Mihai in 1975 he uh, began his research on flow uh, with a simple question why people are often highly committed to activities without obvious external rewards he could observe that certain uh, some, some people uh, are so engrossed in their activities even without any external rewards and so committed in their activities you know that you know that has all these characteristics that i have discussed you know that you know they seems to forget everything else and time seems to disappear that you know why people experience and uh, what is their experience when they actually uh, you know uh, are engaged in such task what is their subjective experience he was interested into under understanding this thing uh, so he found uh, that all these such activities are actually share a common aspect which he called as flow state or flow experience he found that all these activities or people who are engaged in such deep absorbed task one of the common thing he found is the experience of flow which he kind of elaborated in his later research so he was fascinated with artists and their unwavering concentration and wanted to understand this their subjective experiences when they are in such states the various creative people and artists uh, uh, you know very often uh, you know they experience such state when they are so engaged in their task and the creative wor work you know uh, you know they kind of get so absorbed that they forget everything else 
and such state uh, you know uh, he could observe in lot of people particularly creative and creative and artist uh, where you know, there was an unwavering concentration and he wanted to understand what happens in such state and uh, under what conditions such state actually happens uh, so that was his main idea and objective uh, which guided his research so what is flow Chiksen Mihail uh, he uh, defined flow as the intense experiential involvement in a moment to moment activity. So, one thing is in flow state there is an intense involvement moment to moment. So, in the present moment you are fully in the present moment, moment to moment you are focused on the task which can be either a physical or a mental task, physical task can be their mental task, physical task let us say it could be you know sports, mental task it could be some you know, uh, no, uh, it could be some mathematical problem whatever it is. Here attention is fully invested in the task at hand and the person functions at her or his fullest capacity. So, generally people are when they are in the state of flow they function at their best in their fullest capacity. Uh, so, at the functional state there it is highly functional state uh, because of the involvement and engagement unwavering concentration. Chiksen Mihail further said uh, the state of flow is, 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 is a, it is a state of concentration so focused that it amounts to absolute absorption in the activity. Everyone experiences flow from time to time. So, flow is generally experienced by all everybody, some people may experience it more, some may experience it less, but generally all of us have might have experienced flow in certain occasions in our life and we will recognize its characteristics. So, when I ask this question probably most of you could connect with those uh, characteristics simply because you might have experienced certain moments like that. People typically uh, feel strong, alert, in effortless control unself conscious and at the peak of their abilities. So, these are some of the things that he has observed uh, while doing research uh, in the state of flow. Both a sense of time and emotional problem uh, seems to disappear. Emotional problem also seems to disappear because you are not focused on your own uh, typical concept of self. And there is an exhilarating feeling of transcendence. So, you are so involved that you kind of forget yourself. So, that is that may induce a state of self transcendence. So, this is uh, this is a broad conceptual definition of what flow is all about and I am sure you can connect with these ideas because we all experienced uh, this state sometimes at least in our life. So, you might have heard some of the common terms that are associated with flow. For example, athletes generally they talk about being in the zone, you know, sportsmen at least they sometimes say, you know, I was uh, sometimes they perform so well and they when people ask, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is the reason for your uh, performance today? Most of the people say that I was in the being, I was in the zone. Zone means they are so involved uh, in the sports activity itself, you know. Uh, and almost you know the whole sports their abilities fl was flowing out of it very spontaneously. So, they were in the zone you know they are at the fullest capacity. Uh, religious or mystics uh, call it as a ecstatic state, artist, musician call it as an aesthetic rapture. So, these are some of the terms which are uh, kind of you know, connotes the idea of flow. So, uh, it is the full involvement of flow. In a flow, one important characteristic is that the person is fully involved in the task. So, uh, it is not just about happiness, the emotional experiences of happiness, you know. The, so, involvement in the task uh, which may lead to happiness as a byproduct, but it is not just about experiencing happiness and it makes for excellence in life. So, that is why you know it enhances your performance and functionings in life. Uh, we can be happy experiencing passive pleasures of a rested body, warm sunshine or the contentment of a serene relationship, uh, but this kind of happiness is dependent on the favorable external circumstances. So, happiness can be achieved even without flow state also when uh, there is a favorable external circumstances, you know, 
when you are relaxing, you are resting, you have good relationship, contentment, uh, without even you know, focused involvement also one can experience happiness. But in the flow state, involvement is very important. Focus in a particular task is one of the criteria. So in that sense, it is not just about happiness, uh, it is more about a functional state, how you are functioning in a task situation. The happiness that uh, follows flow is of our own making and it leads to increasing complexity and growth in consciousness. So, it enhances your functioning levels also apart from just you know mental experiences of happiness. So, there seems to be three common elements in flaw definitions of various from various definitions that we can find in the literature. Three things are very common. One is sense of deep involvement and concentration in the task feeling of ultimate enjoyment while doing the task because you are so engaged you can be only engaged in a task in which you enjoy it otherwise you cannot be engaged in that task so there is there is a sense of joy and uh, you know involvement in the task there is an intrinsic interest in the task that is also very important no? if you are not interested in the task you cannot experience flow simply because you know you will not have that deep involvement we generally experience deep involvement in tasks where no, we are really internally interested or intrinsically interested or motivated. Uh, so, basically doing uh, the task for its own sake and not because of the external pressure or demands. So, mostly it happens in those kind of tasks where no, it is you are intrinsically interested in that task. There is a cons you know, deeper involvement, there is an intrinsic joy. So, uh, Chiksan Mihai in his research he found that you know there is a specific condition under which flow, flow hap generally happens. So, when people experience flow, it is not a random thing that happens you know random activities. You know, there is a specific conditions, if those conditions are fulfilled then flow happens. So, he found that the state of flow happens under very specific conditions. When we encounter or a challenging task. So, one thing is whenever we encounter a challenging task, when we say something as challenging means what? It means you know it will stretch your skills, it, it will not be very easy for you, uh, it will not be you know, uh, you know neither very easy nor it will be too difficult that you will not be able to do it. So, there is a sense of challenge in here, it will not be easier, but you need to stretch your skills to uh, complete it. So, that is the meaning of challenge. So, when we encounter a challenging task that tests our skill, so uh, you need to expand your skill to f f complete that task. That is a task which is high on challenge and the skill level. So, task that that is high on the requirement and high in terms of challenge, it is highly challenging task as well as it requires high skill also, stretching almost the limit. Only in that condition uh, flow experiences can happen. We will experience anxiety if challenge exceeds skill. So, if our skill is less and it is very challenging, then we will experience anxiety because I will not be able to do it because my I do not have skills to complete that task. It is because it is highly challenging and I do not have that skill. I will So, generally people will experience anxiety in such situation and may experience bored if skill exceeds challenge. If their skill is very high and challenge is very low, then they will feel bored in doing those tasks because it is too easy for them. So, neither of these two cases actually results in flow. Flow only happens when there is a high challenge, high skill situation. So, uh, there is a quadrant model of flow that was proposed. So, I will just draw that model. So, where you can understand uh, conditions under which flow can happen. So, this quadrant model of flow is shown like that. So, if you draw it as a graph, so in one axis it will be skill, skill is you know, from low to high, skill from low to high and here it is challenge dimension. How much challenging is the, is the task? what is the level of challenge. 
so challenge could be low or high so this four based on this interaction of this four condition high and low challenge high and low skill uh, there can be certain outcomes so when in this condition when there is a low skill low challenge here uh, we will experience something called as apathy there will not be any involvement you know so here the person is uh, you know neither having a skill nor the task is challenging skill uh, there is no skill there is not challenge challenge also in the task so person will not have any sense of involvement so that is called as an apathy apathy situation whenever there is a high skill and low challenge so skill uh, the person has high skill but the task is low challenge it is not very challenging so it is easier for that person the person may feel boredom or may feel relaxed because he has high skill but task is very easy for that person here when the skill is very skill requirement is high and also uh, the challenge requirement is also high so this is this is a condition where there is a high skill as well as high challenge this is where experiences of flow happens there is a high requirement of skills as well as challenge is very high flow happens here here when there is a high challenge but skill is very low one will experience anxiety because here the task is very difficult and the person is not having the appropriate skill to do it so the person will experience anxiety so this is the quadrant model of flow which shows basically uh, with the different levels of challenge and different levels of skill the different uh, experiential what, what are the experiential outcomes so one may experience apathy boredom flow anxiety depending on skill uh, skill level as well as challenge level of the task so flow happens only when uh, there is a high skill requirement as well as high challenging situation so let us see some uh, the characteristics of flow in more detailed so chiksen mihail uh, he interviewed thousands of people from uh, uh, from different areas such as chess player mountain climbers tennis players ballet dancers surgeons and so on and he concluded that flow is an universal experience so it is found among people of different cultures almost all cultures so it is an universal experience that is uh, displayed by people of all uh, countries and cultures and he found from his uh, research that you know flow has following important characteristics some of them we have already discussed one is you know there is an intense and focused con concentration on what one is doing in the present moment with no room in one's mind for any other information so there is an intense involvement and mind is not wandering anywhere else person is the is, is in the present moment fully focused in the task second is you know there is a loss of reflective self consciousness what is the meaning of this is that you know uh, loss of self consciousness uh, can lead to self transcending and pushes the boundary of our being forward when not preoccupied with ourselves we experience joy and chance to expand our sense of self so basically you are focus on your own uh, egoistic self it diminishes and it uh, goes completely to the task at hand so that is the meaning of loss of reflective self consciousness and that itself is joyful because then you forget everything about your own uh, emotional and other problems third is uh, merging of action and awareness so in the state of flow activity becomes spontaneous and we merge with the actions and become almost one with the actions such as a painter merges with his painting so flow is basically a description of flow is like that you know you kind of merge with the um, 
action that you are doing. So, you become one with that. So, there is no separation. A uh, flow generally happens when there is a clear goals and immediate feedback. So, whenever there is a very clear goal that you know now what what I should do, to, what is what is what is I am intending to achieve, there is a very clear cut goal and you are also getting immediate feedback. It feedback could be on your own you are getting feedback from doing the task or sometimes it others can give that feedback. So, one should have a clear proximate goal and get immediate feedback how he or she is doing in the task uh, to enjoy and enter into the flow. So, these are also important characteristics or requirement in terms of experiencing flow. Uh, fifth is the sense of control over what one is doing, you know, because you are so involved. So, there is a sense of competence that is why there is a sense of involvement also. Uh, so, there is a sense that one can deal with situation and respond to whatever happens next. So, that sense is there although you are merged with the action, so there, but there is a equally sense of control of the situation also. Sixth characteristic is a distortion of temporal experience, especially the sense that time has passed faster. So, experiences of time is very subjective, you know. So, there is one, uh, one concept of time which is clock time, which is called as objective time, which is same for everybody and uh, there can be another time which is called subjective time, how you experience time in your mind. So, depending on your state of mind, you can experience time differently. For example, you know when we when we are in the state of uh, you know uh, positive emotions or happiness. So, we are very happy when we experience high happiness, uh, generally time runs faster. Uh, you know we may spend hours and we may feel like you know it was just few moments. Uh, so, this is what happens you know and maybe and when we are very sad or depressed time seems to get st get stuck or freeze almost you know you know we, uh, time is we, you are not able to spend time so time seems to be longer so few minutes looks like hours so this is experientially happy objectively time is same for everybody but experientially depending on your state of mind you may feel time is running faster or slower so this is what they are saying so in the state of flow you are fully involved engaged so it is a positive state of mind so, generally time seems to uh, run very faster and seventh is activities are intrinsically rewarding. Doing the activity itself is rewarding and end goal is often an excuse for the process and generally when the activity itself is intrinsically interested and you know uh, intrinsically rewarding, uh, then uh, flow is likely to happen you know more likely to happen. So, these are some of the important characteristics uh, that he found from the research. Uh, what are the activities that are conducive and non-conducive for flow experiences? So, activities uh, you know, that can facilitate flow experiences are called autotelic activities. Autotelic means it is a Greek term, auto means self, teleos means goal. Activities which are intrinsically interested, you know, self goal oriented kind of activities. Uh, because they are mostly intrinsically motivated and enjoyable and have an end in themselves. So, uh, flow can happen or it is conducive, uh, uh, it can happen to any activities as long as the activity is able to activate high challenge and high skill situation. So, any activity can induce flow state provided this necessary condition of high skill and high challenge situation is there, flow can happen to any activities. Activities such as sports, dancing, creative arts and other hobbies, socialization, studying, reading and very often work situation, job situation, one can experience flow provided that you no know, high skill, high challenge task is there. It can happen to any situations and mostly creative tasks and most often people experience their work in the work life situation, uh, they experience a lot of flow experiences if they enjoy their work most probably. Activities which are less likely to be uh, induced flow experiences are housework, idling and resting, watching TV etcetera. Uh, these activities can uh, be relaxing activities you know, but they may not be may not induce flow simply because you know you do not need very strong involvement and concentration. Uh, you may watch TV, but you can you may relax and enjoy, but uh, it may not induce flow state because if there is no requirement of absolute 
absorption and concentration. Uh, there is no high challenge kind of thing situation. So, therefore, these activities are not likely to generally not likely to induce flow state. So, consequences of flow, what are the consequences of flow? Lot of research uh, have been conducted in this area and uh, research shows flow has many positive consequences. So, let us see some of the research findings. Uh, flow seems to improve uh, subjective well being, happiness which are almost same thing, life satisfaction and positive effects. So, these are all part of subjective well being, life satisfaction, positive emotions. So, all this at the emotional level, experiential level flow seems to increase all of this. Flow is also found to be correlated with increase in performance. It is very obvious because you know you are so involved in the task. So, whatever uh, you know the outcome of the task is likely to be very good. So, your efficiency and the output of the task will be much better because your engagement is very very high in this situation. So, performance generally increases. There is a higher motivation and engagement and positive mode in organizational context. So, in the organizational context, uh, employees when they experience flow, it leads to higher performance, higher motivation, higher engagement and positive mood uh, in the organizational setting. Few research also indicated that developing enriching and challenging working environment that are conducive for flow may enhance employee productivity. So, research also shows no by changing the work environment in an organization where no it is more conducive and more and challenging uh, work environment can you uh, know facilitate flow experiences among employees and increase productivity while boosting organizational productivity level as a whole. So, by changing certain environmental thing, so we will see some few, few more examples how that can be done. Uh, you know and making it more conducive for flow to happen. So, creating a situation where a high challenge, high skill situation you know, can increase productivity of the organization. According to uh, Angeser and Reinberg, flow is correlated with better performance for two main reasons. Why flow increases better performance? Two main reasons are there. One is flow is highly functional state. So, you are fully engaged in the task. So, obviously, it is highly functional state, you are fully engaged and it promotes performance by itself. So, engagement itself will promote performance. Second is a person experiencing flow are more motivated to perform the further task. So, the motivation will be much higher because experience is better. So, uh, more motivated, they will be more motivated to do this task as well as some future task related to them to keep experiencing flow. So, because they will be more likely to do such task in future because they will like to experience flow state because it is in uh, present state and will set their own challenging tasks to experience flow. They will set their own challenging task. So, these are the important reasons why it leads to better productivity. Flow can also facilitate positive mode which may further promote creativity and positive thinking. Uh, and also encourage helping behavior in, among employees. So, flow state induces you know positive emotions and uh, moods and happiness which are also you know which also facilitate you know this positive state of mind facilitate creativity and critical thinking. So, all these uh, things also uh, can promote productivity indirectly. Experiencing flow encourages a person uh, to persist and return to the activity because of the experiential reward. So, because if person experiences flow in a state, they will more likely to engage in such task more and more in future because the task itself is rewarding, thereby fosters growth and skills over time. Flow is also associated with commitment and achievement during the high school years. Some high school research also shows that you know. Um, students who experience flow state, they seem to be more committed and they seem to achieve better in their school days. Longitudinal research also suggests that you know mastering challenges in daily life. So, basically experiencing flow, mastering challenges is associated with flow experiences can protect against negative outcomes in life. For example, Flow experiences was uh, uh, was associated with diminished delinquency after two years of 
high adversity at home school in a sample of American adolescents. So, the research also indicates that you know if people uh, or uh, if we experience flow from our childhood itself or from our school days you know they will protect us from some negative outcomes in life such you know negative behavior such as you know it protects it one research protects that it you know reduces the chances of becoming you know in or involved in behaviors that are related to child delinquency or you know uh, some criminal behaviors or negative behaviors. Uh, because the person will have you know the, some positive direction in terms of doing productive activities. So, flow experiences were associated with a diminished delinquency after even 2 years of high adversity because generally after adversity at home and school uh, many uh, children or very many uh, many children uh, are likely to become delinquent especially after negative events in their life. So, flow seems to protect against all these things. Another uh, concept that is related to flow is called as autotelic personality. It is basically, uh, basically what it basically means there are possibility of individual differences in the frequency and intensity of flow experiences. So, it is possible that individual also differ in the experiences of flow. Some individuals are more likely to experience flow as compared to others. Uh, and uh, so, there may be some individual differences. Uh, so, that means personality differences. So, autotelic personalities are those people who are more likely to experience flow. So, uh, because you know flow experience could be related to personality factors as well as situational variables. Chikson Mihail hypothesized that you know some may have uh, an increased likelihood of experiencing uh, this state of flow he called them as autotelic personality or people with autotelic personality are more likely to engage in flow activities or more likely to experience flow in their life. He suggested that autotelic personality uh, which, which is a term that derived from the Greek word autos means self, telos means ant. So, he uh, suggested that autotelic personality as ex exhibited by a person who enjoys life and generally does things for their own sake rather than in an order to achieve some external goal. So, generally this autotelic personality who experiences more flow experiences in their life, uh, they seems to uh, guided more by their internal uh, standards or internal motivations. So, they generally tend to do those things that, that they like internally, they themselves rather than you know some external pressures that somebody says do that and they, you know, they are less likely to be guided by those external uh, you know, pressures to do something. They are more guided by uh, doing things that they enjoy that they comes from comes intrinsically and they are intrinsically motivated to pursue them. So, this is one thing that he observed. Further he said autotelic individuals have a disposition to be intrinsically motivated in high challenge and high skill situations. So, there is an individual differences here. Some people enjoy being in the high challenge, high skill situation. They enjoy doing challenging task. So, autotelic people are like that, you know. They enjoy doing challenging task. So, therefore, they are more likely to experience um, that flow experience. They are not very happy when low challenge, low skill situations, you know they try to avoid those situations and they enjoy and prefer situations of high skills and high challenge situation. He also said non autotelics people who are not autotelics, uh, they are not least motivated in high challenge, high skill situations. So, people who do not experience flaw too much actually are those people who avoid high challenge situations. So, there may be individual differences here. So, they even though they may be good at, but they may seems to, they seems to enjoy avoid high challenge, high skill situations. So therefore, uh, they miss a lot of opportunities to experience flow. So on the other hand, uh, such people uh, may prefer apathy condition. May prefer apathy conditions where well, lost challenge situation they may prefer. So there may be individual differences. You know, some people are predisposed to experience flow more simply because they seek high challenging situation and another reason is they they tend to enjoy uh, uh, or they tend to engage in tasks which are 
intrinsically in interesting for them rather than just uh, you know following uh, the demands of external social demands of what to do uh, so because of that intrinsic motivation probably they experience more also rathunde uh, one of the researcher demonstrated that autotelic personality is fostered in what he called as complex family environment one that simultaneously provides support and challenge so research also says family environment may also play some role in terms of development of this autotelic personality especially family environment you know it simultaneously provide support as well as challenging you uh, know situations so they are exposed from their childhood to challenging circumstances and there is a supporting uh, family environment also so such uh, family environment may promote autotelic personality they are more likely to become autotelic personalities in their adulthood so intervention to foster flow uh, uh because from this research findings uh, people have also tried to use this research and understanding to facilitate flow in different uh, environmental context flow principles have been applied in variety of context you know so in general uh, two types of interventions approaches uh, can be seen uh, in terms of various you know applied researches one is to uh, shape activity structure and environment so that they foster flow and obstruct it less so one thing is that you change the environment of work environment it could be in the organizations it could be in the school so you change the structure and then uh, and then and the environment of an work context so that they promote flow more or there is a less obstruction for flow to happen so this could be one way of promoting flow by changing the environment to facilitate flow another approach is to assist individuals in finding flow another approach is to help individuals uh, and clarify and make them understand how can they experience flow and assist them in experiencing flow so by intervention could be at the individual level it could be at the environmental level so one of the such uh, application one of the best application of such flow principles both of these principles of the environment as well as personal uh, intervention uh, could be seen uh, you know took place in one of the school in us which is called as key school in indianapolis us uh, where they made a separate flow activity center in their school and they try to implement these understandings in their schools how they implemented is that so uh, so the goal was to foster flow by influencing both environment and the individual so both the principles were applied in that school so the school tried to uh, create a learning environment that foster flow experiences so they try to create an environment in the school so that flow can and flow can be facilitated and also they help student to uh, develop interest and capacity to experience flow students are also kind of counseled how they can experience flow so for so they, this this is an example where both environmental as well as individual level interventions were done so in that school flow activity center what they did uh, students are given regular opportunities to actively choose and engage in activities of their own interest so in the flow activity center in order to facilitate flow experience the students are given opportunities to choose activities so one thing is when you choose something it is intrinsically motivated when it is given to you it is extrinsically uh, given so as research suggests intrinsically motivated task promote flow experiences so they were given choice to you know engage in activities that they enjoy of their own interest and then pursue these activities without demands and distractions there was not much demands and distraction from the environment they could choose their activities and so basically they created what they used to call as serious play like situation no so there is a playfulness but there is a seriousness to it also so uh, this is one thing that they did so in the environmental level in terms of giving activities uh, they were given uh, activities and situations which could promote flow also the to support students capacity to develop experience flow teachers encourage student to challenge and stretch themselves so they are also been guided by the teachers 
uh, to experience this flow from their you know so in individual level interventions were also given so teachers also provided new challenges to the children to foster growth so new challenging tasks were also given and they were asked to choose more challenging tasks in such a in a, in a way so that flow can be fostered so uh, this is how you know uh, you know apl applied uh, flow can be applied in different context such as schools uh, similar principles of flow research have also been applied in other settings such as organizations various kinds of organizations such as police organization automobile factory art museums and flow experiences or principles of flow have also been used in psychotherapies also where therapists assist their clients to experiences flow uh, to help them and, and they guide them to experiences flow and what activities to choose and all these kinds of individual guidance are also uh, given in many psychotherapic situation also. So, these are some of the important you know findings and most of the findings shows flow has many benefits in terms of experiences of happiness, positive emotion as well as performance in terms of increasing outputs and efficiencies. Uh, so, it has so many benefits. However, research also shows there could be some dangers to flow experiences also. What is the danger is that you know flow experiences can happen to both morally good as well as bad activities. Now, flow happens to an activity. Now, what kind of activity you choose is something you know it depends to the, uh, to, to the person. So, flow can happen even to some activities which are not considered morally good. For example, uh, flow can happen to activities such as gambling, such as you know games, video games or some internet uh, gaming and gambling activities. So, because those uh, situations or activities provide opportunities for high challenge and high skill situations. So, some people get very addicted to those activities because they experience it very good. So, at the experiential level uh, they have experienced very you know positive emotions and there is a high engagement. So, they uh, like it so much that they, they want to experience it again and again. So, there is a danger in that sense it can become addictive uh, in a in activities which may not be uh, good or productive for the person's life. So, in that sense it can be dangerous. Some flow activities can become addictive such as in a mountain climbing. Uh, some people become so addicted uh, addictive to certain activities that they, they forget other aspects of life you know they perceive only certain activities. Addiction to flow can also lead to losing a larger perspective of life then you do not uh, give enough attention to other part of your life you only get addicted to only those activities. So, you neglect other aspects of life which are important for your growth. So, that can happen sometime. So, in this context uh, Chixen Mihail wrote enjoyable activities that produce flow have a potentially negative effect also while uh, they are capable of improving the quality of existence by creating order in the mind. Uh, they can become addictive at which point the self becomes captive of the certain kinds of order and is then unwilling to cope with the ambiguities of life. So, one can become captive of the activities because it induces flow. It is possible. Therefore, it is important to remember the issue of regarding flow is not only how we make it happen, but also how we can manage it using it to enhance life yet being able to let go of when necessary. So, it is important you know for all the context or for all the things that we do in life it can be used in a negative sense and it could be used in the positive sense also. So, flow can happen uh, in the case of flow also similar things can happen you know you one need to choose it choose the activities uh, you know uh, you know properly and uh, so that you know it enhances your life you can use flow to enhance your life to make your life happier, to make your life more satisfactory, to make your life more productive, uh, to make your life more achievement oriented. Uh, but it can also lead to some negative outcomes if you get hooked into wrong activities. So, that is possible. So, that choice is always there, one need to choose it wisely. So, according to Chixen Mihail, flow is a source of mental energy that focuses attention and motivates action like other forms of energy it can be used for constructive or destructive purpose. So, it can be done for both the ways. 
Therefore, he suggested that it is not enough to strive for enjoyable goals only. One must also choose goals that will reduce some total of entropy of the world, that is constructive goals. So, for the fundamental important aspect is that you know, choose goals which are constructive to your life and for the people around you, for the organization, for the society, whatever it is. It is choose goals that are constructive and if you engage or if you experience flow in those constructive goals, you know, then you know, your quality of life will be very high and uh, it will lead to a lot of satisfaction and productivity. Uh, so, same thing can become dangerous if you choose wrong things and in certain activities where you know, uh, which are not morally desirable. So, that individual you know discernment is very important. So, these are some of the ideas related to flow. Uh, so, we have discussed various happiness enhancing activities in last two modules uh, from, gratitude, from gratitude, act of kindness, social comparison, uh, we have discussed you know st psychological strengths, how to use strengths to enhance our life and how to use flow experiences to enhance our life. So, these are very important concepts, we can use all of these concepts in our life to enhance the quality of your life to the experiences of our life and functioning of our life. So, with this I end today's lecture, thank you.